tell you one thing. I don't remember that much about it. And I was talking to Alta, and she said, she reminded me that, oh, you were sick as a dog. And sure enough, I looked back at some old emails, and that Monday I said, I'm sick. I'm going home early. Mm -hmm. And I went home. So I was at home when all this happened. And we knew it was bad, but we didn't realize how bad because we only lost power for about five minutes at our apartment and everything came back. We said, oh, okay, I guess things are... But as the news reports started rolling, and then Alta, she was feeling good, so she went out and was starting to take pictures and saw and showed me all the pictures. It was incredible. The one thing that probably stands out the most for me is the electric trucks. Mm -hmm. Over the next week or so, you've seen the, nothing but armies of electric via, you know, the, uh, the, the electric companies from all over the country. Louisiana, oh, yeah. they came up from. Yeah, oh, yeah. and, and the, the roar of uh, chainsaws mm -hmm. and all that going on. I was home when it happened, and uh, yeah, I knew it was bad because we had several trees down in my neighborhood. Um, just hearing the reports, and I came back up here to the station because I figured we got to get back on here and talk about this. Mm -hmm. It was a maze just trying to get to the radio station because the roads were all closed. Tree limbs were down, there were all lines down, and you couldn't go across certain streets that you normally traveled. So you, it was actually trying to get to the station was the hardest part. I, I managed to maneuver. It took me 30 minutes to go through backyards, and, not backyards, but alleys and stuff like that that I could oh. navigate through <laughs> yeah. just to get to a thoroughfare to get here. Mm -hmm. And once we got here, then we knew you know, we were off the air. And it was going to be uh, a long time before we could get back on the air, simply because we had no power in the building. I mean, we had some power out at the transmitter site, but no power here at the building. And then we had no power at the transmitter site for a while, so we were j just shut down. And that was the most frustrating part, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to get there. Try, well, yeah. trying to get the, the word out to people that, you know, that this is what took place. Because we sat here and sat here and sat here, like, <laughs> forever. Yeah. And uh, yeah. finally, we're able to get some power, and we're on the air to, to get the word out about what was needed in this community. It was it was horrible. Mm -hmm. Well, luckily, you know, out of the four stations, we still had one station that was available to us, and that was KHMO. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was I think it was the first day of uh, summer bids for bargains. Yeah. The other thing that was amazing to me uh, to listen to and into the evening hours, it was kind of eerie. As a matter of fact, was no power, no TV, no. Uh, radio based on she had transistor radios of course but uh, the sound of sirens going constantly you could hear fire trucks and uh, emergency service vehicles throughout the night you know two three four in the morning you were you were hearing because they were dealing with issues with fires and lines down and everything else and, and emergencies and they too had difficulty getting to where they had to get oh yeah so I mean you know just that the, the eerie sound effect of uh, emergency vehicle at 2 and 3 in the morning that everybody hears every once in a while and wakes up from it. It was constant throughout the whole night. Yeah. What I did, I uh, I live up on a kind of like a hill and uh, there's, you know, there's people around and stuff like that. But what happened with me was I was looking out the window. We have a plate glass window there out to the deck. All right. So I was looking out there, and I noticed, you know, okay, here's something that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, you know, and all of a sudden, out from nowhere, from a tree in our yard, it came down. A big branch came down, and it hit, it hit our thing out there, the, the glass, and it didn't break. Wow. My God! It, uh, You're we living were, right. That's why. no kidding. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why it didn't do that. I have no idea. But after that, then we went. That went to the back. Then we went out front, and it was nothing but a disaster. It, it really was just all up and down the lane. Yeah. Well, we spent several days after that, uh, you know, waiting for the power to come back on. Mm -hmm. Literally, just sitting here in the dark telling stories like we are now, <laughs> yeah. you know, and trying to kill the time in hopes that sooner or later the power was going to make its way back on here. So we even took shifts of who would be here and who can go home in case the power came back on. So, And eventually it did. And uh, About 10 o'clock, uh, was it Wednesday night, I think is when, uh, when it finally came back yeah. on. Everybody was trying to get out after that windstorm mm -hmm. to see the damage. See it. And that just compounded the problem with the relief people yeah. trying to clear the streets and everything else because the traffic was incredible. Mm -hmm. After that windstorm, we go on sightseers. down. You know, you go from block to block, and there was nothing but trees, you know, and cars, you know, 
just on down the line and nothing but trees. You couldn't go anywhere. Yeah, there was a lot of gridlock going on because cars yeah. couldn't negotiate through the streets. Yeah. And, you know, there was maybe one lane open and cars were coming both ways and because everybody wanted to get out and see how bad it really was. Cars smashed down, well, not cars, but the limbs crashed down on the cars, yeah. Yeah. you know. And the cars were smashed. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the most frustrating part was to have to sit here and not be able to tell people what was going on. Yep. And how we could get word out about, you know, maybe water was needed here or power was going to be coming on shortly there. And that was the most frustrating part about the whole thing, I thought. Mm. But once the power came on, uh, Gary had to call a uh, call the electrician that installed the generator so that they could disconnect from it and then rehook the regular power to it, so it wouldn't backfeed to the. Uh... So we had power at our transmitter site at one point, but we didn't have power in the building. Yep. So we couldn't broadcast to the transmitter site. So that's when we brought in the, the, the generator, portable yeah. generator, and uh, once we got that hooked up, it was. Uh, Good to go for a while, at least. Yeah. yeah, we could at least put something on the air. It wasn't much, but we could get something to work with at least. <laughs> but I don't think any of us want to go through that again. What a night! <laughs>